Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone, while you're still eating, if I can have your attention. Thank you, Somerset County. Thank you, Democrats. I hope you're enjoying yourselves so far. And it's great to see you all again. We have great candidates. We have great opportunity. And tonight we have a great speaker who's going to talk to us about many of the things that he's done and the way that he's achieved the successes he has. The mayor of Jersey City, Steve Fulop, is with us tonight. And And as many of you are mayors, many around the room, Mayor Shane, Melanie Morano, you're here, and I don't know, so many others, I don't want to miss any of you, but you all know that mayors are the backbone of our communities. And in many ways, they're the front lines, and they're the inspiration that drive us. And although many of you have titles and official responsibilities, I'd like to single out one person who was never given the title of mayor, but in my opinion, he could be the mayor of New Jersey. He's a man who has meant a great deal to me personally, and if you don't know him, trust me, he's done more for democratic causes and philanthropic activities than many of us could ever imagine. And just for a moment, if you could join me in, in honoring John Graham. <laughs> who, who I absolutely consider the mayor of New Jersey. And Jersey City is a special place. It's a unique environment. And for 200 years, it's been so much to the state and to the nation. So many of our relatives, our ancestors, have come through Jersey City to find a better place in America. And it's the second largest city. And I would say, in many ways, it's the very best. Well, wait a minute. Is Corey here? No, no. I got to stay good with Corey just in case there's a burning building somewhere that I might need help from. But I think Jersey City is the very best. It's the very best city which for 200 years has welcomed immigrants from across the world. The cultural diversity that existed so many years ago still exists. And the economic powerhouse that it was remains a beacon for New Jersey. In many ways, Jersey, New Jersey City represents the American dream, where opportunity takes hold. And I remember the stories of my mother when she was a young girl and a young lady growing up in Jersey City and telling me how wonderful the streets were, filled with so many different and diverse cultures, different languages, different foods, but they all got along and they focused on the American dream and on making this country the best it could be. And that's what made it work, the differences made us unique. And today, if you go to Jersey City, you can see that American dream alive and well. And the ideals that Steve Fulop embodies maintain the American dream. And it's really no wonder. His background is incredibly unique. He is the son of immigrant parents. And Steve, I know that very well because I'm the son of immigrant parents. And that changes a little bit your perspective. Another thing that's very different in, in someone's background, and some, Steve and I share also. Steve's grandmother and my father were Holocaust survivors. And that makes you respect, love, and cherish this country even more. And growing up, you worked in the family business. I did too. I got stuck, you got out. Congratulations. But in that, you learn the value of hard work. You learn the hardships that people endure every day. And you learn that education is in many ways your best way up and out. And Steve took those lessons to heart. He got a master's degree from Columbia and NYU. I got a master's from Fordham. And I think if I had more hair, you'd say we were even twins. But there's where our similarities stop. He went on to Goldman Sachs and he started his, his career as an investment banker. Now many of us know where that could lead people, in the money and the affluence. And he was on that career track. But being in New York on September 11th, and having that day change our lives, he decided to volunteer and he enlisted in the United States Marines. He spent a tour of duty in Iraq, helping to secure the streets of Baghdad, and won many commendations including the Overseas Service Ribbon, the Meritorious Masts, 
and the Presidential Unit Citation. As any veteran, he deserves our respect and appreciation. He came back from Iraq, went back into investment banking, but never lost his competitive spirit. He's run many marathons, triathlons, and just recently rappelled out of the side of a building to raise money for the American Cancer Society. He's truly a champion, and he champions our causes. And in the political arena, he decided to get in in 2005, and he won the city council race as the third youngest councilman in the 200 year history of Jersey City. Now being the youngest is wonderful, but how he did it is more remarkable. He went against the institution and the establishment. He was outspent two to one, but he won because he worked hard. And when he ran for mayor just this past year, the same thing. The institutions were against him. The establishment didn't want him. The incumbency was strong, but he worked hard. He fought from the bottom up. He encouraged people and enlivened their spirit with his vision for the future. And once again, he won. And I think the relevance and the significance to us here in Somerset County is for us to understand that we can win against insurmountable odds, we will win against the establishment, and we will change the face of government all for the better. And Steve, we have you to thank for that because it's visionaries like you, people who fight every day, are the ones that give us hope that we will be the next county to turn blue, that we will send our candidates to Trenton, to Washington, and change the world we live in. Now it's not just about winning, and it's not just about the hats, it's about what you do, and it's about how you legislate. And in a very short time, Mayor Fulop has changed and enacted many ethics reforms in Jersey City. He's revitalized the economic growth in one of our most valuable cities, and he's created a vision for Jersey City and New Jersey. As the new Colossus raises her lamp to the shores and to the tired, and to the poor, and to the golden door of America. That golden door starts in Jersey City, and that land is illuminated by visionaries and people with passion and conviction. And more often than not, those people are Democrats, and we're honored to have Mayor Steve Fulop join us this evening. Thank you, thank you for the Rocky theme song, and uh, thank you Zenon for that five minute introduction, you read it as I wrote it, perfectly, <laughs> and uh, let me say first a couple of thank yous, let me say thank you to Peg for inviting me here today, I will tell you that, um, that though we don't know all of each other uh, all that well, Peg is a tireless advocate for the Somerset Democratic Organization, and Although tough times and, and tough odds and people say that it's a long way before Democrats live, uh, win here in Hudson County, I mean in Somerset County, I tell you that uh, Peg is relentless in her commitment to building a party that works and her commitment will translate eventually into some meaningful wins in changing Somerset County into a Democratic County. And uh, I just want to say thank you for that. I also wanted to also uh, personally thank the mayor of New Jersey, John Graham, and, uh, and John, John, John and I met, it's nice to see him here today, we met uh, six years ago and when I early got involved with the Hillary campaign and he is a statewide force, he, he is the chairman, for those some of you who don't know, for both the John Kerry campaign and the Hillary Clinton campaign and he has tremendous, tremendous relationships around the entire state and truthfully around the entire country and it really is a privilege to have him here today so thank you for coming today, we really appreciate the support. Give John a round of applause. And, um, 
And then finally, let, let me mention Xenon here, who, uh, you know, it's small gestures that mean a lot to people. I actually met Xenon uh, about the same time during the Hillary Clinton campaign, and we were invited to an event in Bergen County that actually John was hosting and uh, on Hillary Clinton's behalf. And I was somebody who, as he touched on on the introduction, was on the outside of the political party. And few people, despite the fact that I was very involved with the Hillary campaign, few people even knew who I was or let alone wanted to talk to me in any capacity. Since that time, I've had a lot of new friends. But uh, in any event, you know, Xenon was one of those people there who was very warm, welcoming, reached out, made me feel comfortable. And for all of you who certainly know him in this room, that is his personality. Um, outside of politics, he's just a terrific human being. So I just want to say thank you for inviting me. And, uh, having me here to and you know, I, I do want to touch on some of the importance and the, the, the direction in uh, Jersey City and some of the things that... Uh, we're accomplishing there and how we're doing it. Um, I, I do want to start and say that I will be brief. I, I'm a believer that brevity is really important and I'll share with you a quick story. Uh, part of my background during my undergraduate, year, undergraduate years, I spent some time at Oxford University uh, in England and Oxford is a phenomenal place to learn. It really is a special way of learning because they have a one-to-one -one teacher to student ratio. So the way that works is once a week you have a class with a professor and then they give you a direction and there's no way you could get left behind because of the nature of that way that they teach. Several times per semester, they would bring famous actors, athletes, politicians, um, thought leaders throughout the world to what's called the Oxford Union, which is a room probably four times as big as this and it's a tremendous amount of history there and uh, they would bring in thought leaders to briefly discuss uh, a topic that they're an expert in, maybe 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less, and then uh, they would open it up to the students and for a dialogue and a Q&A. And when I was there, I had the chance to see James Baker speak, former Secretary of State. And James Baker, I don't know if anybody in this room has had a chance to see him speak, but he's not a short-winded individual. And uh, about an hour into the presentation, a gentleman in the uh, front row starts to get up and rustle around. And this is actually a true story, so I'll share it with you as far as background, because there's a lesson in this. Uh, starts to rustle around, and he puts his jacket on and his hat. And uh, James Baker, standing where I would be today, actually stopped the conversation, stopped his lecture, and said, excuse me, young man, you're being extremely disruptive. What could possibly be so important? And this is in a room filled with students. <laughs> And uh, the student says, look, I, I need to go. I need to go get a haircut. And, uh, and James Baker says, look, um, I'm a little older than you, and I, I hope you don't take this as trying to embarrass you, but the proper thing to do in a dialogue like this is uh, if you think you need a haircut, you either get it before or you get it after, not during. And the student, to his credit, without missing a beat, he said, with all due respect, secretary, when this started, I didn't need a haircut. So uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. Uh, let me, let, me tell you, let me say that uh, I, I do want to say thank you really for uh, coming here tonight and giving me an opportunity to really be part of the, uh, the Somerset County Democratic Organization and building what's really going to be a meaningful party in the state of New Jersey. You know, there, there's an old Chinese proverb that you should live in interesting times. And this is certainly one for the current state and the Democratic Party as a whole. You know, Jersey City, as Zenon touched on, is really the home of the Statue of Liberty. And Jersey City, in many ways, is symbolic of America and a symbol for really the state of New Jersey. It represents the historic struggles of immigrants arriving from foreign lands, as Zenon mentioned, and the challenges that our diversity brings of forging one single community, or as Dr. King used to say, one beloved community from the rich diversity that we have in this state or in our city. See, Jersey City, is destined and was destined to be a place not only as a place really of hope but really a place of opportunity and it's a place that my parents were given that opportunity and for me as Zenon touched on my service today is a way to recognize that this country and this state and that city provided my parents and my brothers a very unique chance as he touched on from a family of Holocaust survivors and that immigrated here for just an opportunity to provide a better life for their children like many of you in this room is really born my feeling that service is really crucial, that service is defined as the life well lived. Whether it's service in the Marine Corps, or service on the city council, or public servants, teachers, employees sitting here today, or volunteers involved in the Somerset County Democratic Organization, service really has always been understood as a price for a life well lived. And as my fellow Marines would say, the credo of the United States Marine Corps, 
Semper Fidelis, who calls upon us to be faithful to the nation and the state and those that we serve. And so with that in mind, and the importance of service, I'm here today because Jersey City, the city of immigrants, in many ways is arguably a beacon of things to come for the Democratic Party as a whole. It's really a community, if you think about it, that harbors the great challenges, the great hopes, the great aspirations, really of all of us. Well, and although Jersey City's history, like our Democratic Party today, has struggled in many ways with forging one single community, it is really our responsibility in here of service and a commitment to move it forward despite the challenges and the headwinds that we have in this current election. See, my background and progress to today is similar to many ways of you here standing in this room. I came from outside a political organization and few thought I had a chance to win. Few gave me any support as we ran against the political infrastructure in every way in the state of New Jersey. Nearly every single labor organization was against us, every single mayor in Hudson County. It was the only race in the entire country that President Obama endorsed in, and he endorsed the incumbent who I ran against. Every single senator was against us, including Mayor Bloomberg across the river. Yet, a commitment to volunteerism that you see in this room, a commitment to ideals, and a commitment to the democratic principles which bring us together today made all the difference in being successful in an election that few thought we could win. Something that will happen very soon in Somerset County, I believe, as well. What I learned in the campaign is that, yes, there are differences and struggles in the party and in Jersey City, similar to what we see today and in every local organization, but also as Jersey City, the community is built with our differences, it really is also built with our similarities. See, we understand in Jersey City that we are committed to the creation now of really one party, despite what you may read and see with disagreements of candidates and who to support on Democratic candidates leading the top of our ticket or throughout the ballot, we are really committed to one Democratic party and one Democratic ticket. See, the reality is... The reality is that we can't really subscribe to the false choice that you see across the state between personal gain of a few while compromising our broader principles. We've engaged in that false choice for really too long, and indeed we are and must be one city, one party, one county, one community, one congregation of believers in the aspirations of our future for a strong Democratic Party for the entire ticket come this November. See, our Democratic principles demonstrate that when we work together, as a community, as a shared party, whatever the challenges are, we are at our best. However, when we engage in self-destructive bickering, as you see often, instead of building a sound economic and educational future, we lose precious time and the promise of opportunity for our children. While many across the state have abandoned the Democratic Party in the face of a tough election, we must ask more of ourselves for it is really what we do now in this time, in this election, which will determine the course of this great party, our Democratic Party, for our future. And when future elections and when future generations reflect back upon this election, will they understand this Democratic Party to be one who set aside petty differences to build a great advocacy for communities that need, or did we allow all of our selfish natures to destroy what we've been asked to do as Democrats? See, when Benjamin Franklin appropriated the phrase that God helps those who help themselves in the 1736 Almanac, he was suggesting that we as people are blessed with the capacity to influence our fate by the work we do only if we are willing to forego our own interests for the sake of our future. And now, I'm here to say that we must rededicate ourselves to the hope and opportunity which is our Democratic Party in New Jersey, a weakened party, yet it still is our party. Yet this as Mayor, or Peg, or Xenon, or John Graham, we can't achieve it without all of you collectively working for the future. In closing, I do want to say and share what I believe is a story from the Talmud that's really important that reflects on the importance of what I believe the core values of the Democratic Party are. It's the story of Honi the Righteous. One day, Honi the Righteous was walking on the road and saw a man planting a carob tree. Honi asked the man, how long will it take for this tree to bear fruit? The man replied, 70 years. Honi then asked the man, and do you think you will live another 70 years and eat the fruit of this tree? The man answered, perhaps not. However, when I was born into this world, I found many carob trees planted by my father and grandfather. And just as they planted trees for me, I am planting trees for my children and grandchildren so they will be able to eat the fruit of these trees. And so I ask you today the same premise as Democrats to work together today for the future. Whether you're an enthusiastic about our democratic ticket or not, 
whether you have questions on their candidacy or not, whether you're a new voter or a lifelong volunteer, whether you live in Hudson County like me or whether you live in Somerset County like many of you, really this is an election that we can make a difference. And if you pledge, and I know that Xenon and Peg feel this, that if you pledge your goodwill, your faith, your hope to a pow powerful vision of a strong, strong Democratic Party and are willing to work for that, we collectively are gonna be able to fulfill our mission, enact policies that protect the less fortunate, provide a pathway for a strong middle class, and most importantly, a growing Democratic Party in the state of New Jersey. Thank you for having me here today, I really appreciate it. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that Mayor Steve Fulop just told us to vote for Barbara Buono and the rest of the Democratic ticket. 